there's nothing that makes you feel like playing in traffic more than an e-bike. But let's face it, when you're cruising around town, or you're on the beach, or you're riding through the woods, you want a bike that's going to make you feel like it can handle whatever you can throw at it. That's where Ingway's new Engine Pro 750 comes in. It's a serious, fat-tired e-bike designed for serious riders. It's big, it's beefy, and it's not for the faint of heart. I'm Matt with Make Use Of, and today we're reviewing the Ingway Engine Pro 750 to see if this thick boy deserves a spot in your garage. Let's roll. Alright folks, here's what you need to know about the Engine Pro. It's currently on sale at the Ingway website for around $14.49, including free shipping. That's down from the previous price of $17.99, so if after this review you think this e-bike is for you, then head on over to the site and grab it. Now let's start with the important parts. This is a Class 2 foldable e-bike with a 750 watt rear hub motor, dual suspension, 20 by 4 fat tires, Logan hydraulic disc brakes, though the website says Tektro mechanical disc brakes, um, 8 speeds, 7 rings in the rear and 1 chain ring up front, uh, a Shimano trigger shifter, a 48 volt 12.8 amp hour lithium removable battery, a color LCD display, cruise control, and a 3 step folding aluminum alloy frame. Ingway claims you can get up to 100 kilometers, or about 62.13 miles on this baby, while in the pedal assist mode. Weight here is 83 pounds, and it will carry riders up to 330 pounds. Recommended rider heights are between 5'2 and 6'4. You don't know how happy it makes me that this e-bike was designed with short people like myself in mind. At 5'4", it's not easy to find bikes that fit me out of the box, so this is a big plus for Ingway right off the bat. This bike also has what's called an IERS system, which stands for Intelligent Energy Regeneration System. The IERS system lets the bike regenerate around 60% of its battery life when you're coasting or when you're going downhill without any energy consumption. Now, the Engine Pro has a thumb throttle on the left side of the handlebar, which is a bit weird, but I'm actually starting to like the placement of. Um, it's got a front headlight, a nice heavy-duty cargo rack built right in. Um, it's also got leather handlebar grips, foldable pedals, an adjustable kickstand, and an adjustable front fork to dial in the comfort of your ride. Fenders come standard on this bike as well. The wheelbase for the Engine Pro is 66 inches when the bike is unfolded and around 30 inches when it's in the storage position. Minimum bar height is 45.6 inches, while maximum is 52 inches. Minimum seat depth is 32 inches and maximum is 40 inches. As for warranty, uh, this bike comes with a one-year warranty against any kind of defects. Finally, if you're like me and live in a place where it snows, you will be happy to know that the Engine Pro 750 can handle temperatures down to negative 4 Fahrenheit or negative 20 Celsius and temps up to 140 Fahrenheit or 60 Celsius. Uh, just don't go more than about 7 miles at a time in extreme temperatures uh, based on Angway's website. So let's discuss setup and assembly. On the day this bike arrived, I unboxed it and I put it together. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that my camera battery had died, so I lost the footage of assembly. But I will tell you the bike comes almost fully assembled. To get it together, I attached the front wheel, the fender, the seat, the stem, and the handlebars, which already had all the cables and the levers for the cockpit attached, um, and then the pedals, and I was pretty much ready to ride. There were only two hitches here. The first was that the front fork was a bit loose in the frame, so I ended up taking the fork apart, re-greasing the caged bearings, and torquing everything down. The second was that the rear derailleur guard was bent inward during transport. Now I figured this out on my first test ride as the chain kept slipping in higher gears. When you get this bike, you should shift through all the gears and you should check to make sure the rear derailleur doesn't touch the guard. If it does, yours is bent and needs to be adjusted. But it's easy to adjust. You can do so just by grabbing the bottom of the guard and pulling on it until it repositions. Both of these issues were minor. So like the rest of the e-bikes I've reviewed, I also gave this one a full walk around to make sure all the bolts were tight, uh, the brakes weren't rubbing, the tires were inflated to the correct pressure, and the chain was properly lubricated. 
I think if you're new to e-bikes, don't skip this step as you don't wanna find out something important is loose at 20 miles an hour. You can also have your local bike shop give things the once over before you set out if that makes you more comfortable. Time-wise, assembly took about half an hour, give or take a few minutes, and not including charge time. Though the unit did come with about 80% battery life from the factory, so if you wanted to get on the road right away, I suppose you could. Now what's in the box? In the box for the Engine Pro, you're gonna get the Engine Pro 750 main body, which is partially assembled. You'll also get the front wheel and tire assembly, the seat and the stem, the headlight, which is also wired but not attached, uh, the charger with the power brick, the foldable pedals, including the installation instructions, um, a pouch with both box end and hex head wrenches for assembly, and the owner's manual. So let's talk about riding the Ingway Engine Pro 750. When you get this bike, the first impulse you'll have is to fire it up, crank the assist to the maximum level, and jam on the throttle to see how fast it will go. Now I understand this impulse and I would be lying if I said that wasn't how my first ride went. But if you've never ridden a fat tire e-bike, I'd recommend you spend some time getting to know what each level of assist does when you're pedaling and when you're using the throttle only before you commit to a longer ride. At level five, which is the maximum assist level here, this bike will surprise you with its 60 Newton meters of torque. On some of the other e-bikes I've reviewed, I've felt like an accessory to the flow of traffic. In other words, I felt as though I wasn't as much a vehicle um, as someone borrowing the road. With this bike, however, I don't feel that way. It's fast enough to keep up with low speed traffic and it's big enough to make drivers understand that you deserve the asphalt just as much as they do. Speed is also something to note. Uh, with pedal assist only, I've gotten this bike to around 26 miles per hour. Yes, this speed is a little less than the claimed 28 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour that Ingway states on its website. But despite this limitation, I found that the max speed is more than enough for city commuting. I've put over 100 miles on the bike in the last two weeks, and I'm still surprised at how quickly I can zip past rush hour traffic. Um, and based on some of the attitude of the drivers in that traffic, I'd say they were pretty surprised as well. Uh, while that might sound a bit haughty, it's mentioned because for a bike like this on the road, you're going to have to exercise some extra caution. So if you get this bike, make sure you get a helmet and I'd even consider other safety gear like additional lighting and mirrors. So what about comfort? So the Engine Pro 750 gets high marks for overall comfort as the wide tires and the dual suspension smooth out most bumps. The one exception here is the saddle. After a couple of days of worth of normal riding, I found that the stock saddle was a bit too firm for my liking. Now, I've since replaced it with a Cloud 9, and I find this seat much more comfortable, um, and to me, it's a necessary upgrade. In the future, I will likely install a suspension seat post just to combat the rough Boston streets. I've also swapped out the quick release seat clamp with one that needs a hex key to remove. It's important to point out that saddle comfort is gonna be subjective, so you will have to evaluate whether the stock one works for you, and I'm sure it will for a lot of people. The ergonomic hand grips on the bike are also soft black leather, which is fantastic for both comfort and style. I don't find my hands slipping while I use them, nor do I find any weird numbness or pain after long rides. The upright riding position of the bike means that I'm not hunched over and uncomfortable, uh, which is good for my almost 42 year old ex-mechanic body. If you want a comfortable ride, then a bike with this riding position is a wonderful option. So let's talk a little bit about range. Now the battery of this bike is a 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour unit. That equates to around 614.4 watt hours. This capacity level is about average for bikes in this general category. The electric XP 2.0 battery, for example, offers around 460 watt hours. The Rad Runner Plus, on the other hand, offers around 670 watt hours. Angway's claim is that this bike will get around 100 kilometers or approximately 62 miles when you're using pedal assist mode. Obviously, this is gonna vary based on rider weight, height, and pedal assist level. I tend to hybridize my ride between maximum pedal assist and a bit of throttle, and I've found range to be around 30 to 35 miles. However, I'm pretty sure if I lowered the pedal assist to around three or I used less throttle, then I could get more mileage out of it. So if you plan on using this bike for a 10 to 20 mile commute, I think you could get away with it as long as you were conscious of whether you were using full pedal assist or throttle alone. The IERS feature will also come into play here. If you have a lot of downhill areas or areas where you can coast for an extended period of time, uh, then you might find you're able to squeeze some additional charge out of the battery. 
The battery is also removable. So if you wanted to toss your charger in your backpack or secure it to the included rack and just charge the battery when you get to your destination, that's also an option. Full charge from flat for this battery takes between five and seven hours. So it's perfect for charging over the span of a workday. Now the battery can also be locked into the bike so that if someone were to try and steal it, they wouldn't be able to. So what about the display? The display for the Engine Pro is a KD718 manufactured by Keydisp. It's a full color display operated via a small control pad on the left side of the handlebars. What I like about the display is that it offers the ability to easily access settings. So you can customize many aspects of the bike. Um, now you're not gonna be able to bypass the speed limiter, but you can dial in the level of assist you want as well as several other settings. You can even set a passcode for the bike as well, which is something that I really like uh, as it adds an extra layer of protection if someone decides to steal a bike. There's also trip and mileage information, battery life, IERS charge indication, wattage use, speed, and error code information that can be obtained using this display. Overall, I think it's one of the most comprehensive displays I've used, and I consider it a premium option for a bike like this. On the back of the display, there's also a USB port, uh, so if you need to charge your phone on the go, uh, if it's about to die, or if you want to use your device as like a navigation system, then this port is perfect for it. It's also removable. One thing I would like to point out here is that the control pad for my demo model had a few chunks of rubber missing from the keys. Now that's not a huge deal, but it is something that was a bit eyebrow raising from a quality control perspective. So what's to love about the Engine Pro by Ingwei? For city riding and trail duty, this bike is a whole lot of fun. It's also a head turner and grabs a lot of attention. People wanna know where I got it, how much it costs, um, and all that kind of good stuff. I also love the rugged style, the comfortable suspension, and the fat tires. Battery life is exceptional for the weight, and having the bike fit shorter riders is something that is immediately appealing to people like me. By that, I mean shorter riders. Additionally, I like the fact that you can fold it up and stick it in the trunk of your vehicle and that you can remove the battery for easy on-the-go charging. Having fenders come standard is also a, uh, a great option for folks planning on using this bike throughout all four seasons. Just about everything feels premium on the Engine Pro, from the leather hand grips to the display to the beefy rear rack. This unit seems designed with serious riders in mind. And while it's not a mountain bike, I would feel comfortable taking it off road or onto the beach without any second thought. Now, speaking of the rack, the inclusion of one on this unit makes carrying a bag or a backpack with you even easier. I think the rack has to be one of my favorite additions. Plus, if you decide it doesn't work for you, it's also completely removable. For me, this bike stands out as the most fun e-bike that I've tested to date. There's just something about it that makes me want to keep turning the key. So what's not to love, and what are some suggested upgrades here? The things I dislike about this bike are few and far between, but like most things, it isn't exactly perfect. Now first on the list is going to be space on the handlebars is a bit tight. This is another circumstance that I think is going to boil down to personal preference. For me, I wanted to add a bit more lighting to the bike for night rides, as my route home takes me through a five mile stretch of dark trail. Now I've also added some mirrors for using the Engine Pro in city traffic. If you're using this bike on the road, you're gonna want these, as drivers can get a bit aggressive if they see you bombing along while they're stuck in traffic. Additionally, using my phone GPS required some type of handlebar mount. I've also swapped out the saddle for comfort, as I mentioned, uh, and I've swapped out the quick release clamp holding the saddle to the bike frame. Quick release clamps might be great for on the go adjustments, but they can also offer easy access to expensive saddle conversions. Finally, because the bike attracts so much attention, I've purchased an alarm and a GPS tracker in addition to using my trusty six pound kryptonite chain lock. Now you might find excessive attention as a positive, but it's important to consider the Engine Pro 750 sticks out like a swollen digit, which may make it a target for opportunistic thieves. So now we're down to that final question. Should you buy the Ingwe Engine Pro 750? Oh yeah. Based on my experience, I would say that this bike has a lot to offer. It's priced fairly, it's comfortable to ride, and most of all, it is an absolute blast. There's just so much to love about it that it's hard not to recommend. I think if you're looking for a serious fat tire e-bike, then the Engine Pro 750 should be on the short list of bikes you're considering. Yes, it's big. Yes, it's bulky. But the fundamental question is, will this bike serve you when you're out on the road, out on the trail, or just running errands around town? 
For the Engine Pro 750, the answer to that question is an enthusiastic yes, with the best part being how much fun you'll have in the process. So what do you think of the Ingway Engine Pro 750? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. And if you want to read our full review on this e-bike, head on over to makeusub.com. At makeusub.com, we have thousands of articles that are designed to make technology just a little bit simpler. Now, for Make Use Of, my name is Matt. I appreciate you watching today, and we will see you in the next video.